let's say you have a drug, you want to test it to see if it prevents cancer in people or something, and you decide your test population will be a set of identical triplets, Jim, Josh, and John. They're identical triplets, and you've decided you're going to test it in them. People would laugh at you. <laughs> That's not a good design. If you want to see if your drug works, you sort of have to test it on people who are not identical genetically to one another. Yet that sort of thing, which is so obvious in human analogies, is ignored by nearly all mouse scientists. One of the hallmarks of the ITP is the mouse model that is used and how it differs from some of the more typical mouse models that, shall we say, run rampant in biomedical research. Maybe tell us a little bit about what the standard off-the-shelf mouse model is, where it came from, and maybe some of the problems or limitations associated with that. 97%, the last time I checked, of requests for aged mice to the National Aging Institute were for the same kind of inbred mouse. Its formal name is C57 Black 6, and everybody calls it the B6 mouse. These are the standard mouse, and it's a really bad thing for science, not just aging science, but science in general that relies on an inbred mouse. There are several problems. One is that it's a single genotype, and it has been shown many times now that if you have a drug that works in black six mice, it might work in another kind of mouse. It might not work. It might have the opposite effect in another kind of mouse. they are good, strong papers on those issues. So people study the black six mice in the mistaken belief that it's sort of like mice in general, despite the now really quite convincing evidence that it isn't. So the ITP, from the word go, made a decision. It was, it was controversial, but in retrospect was a really good decision instead to use a genetically heterogeneous mouse. The particular kind of mice we use is called UMHET3. UM, because that's where it was first derived, and HET is for heterogeneous. These are mice, um, essentially, which have the same set of grandparents. Any two mice in our population have share half of their genes, just like you would share half of your genes with a brother or sister. But it's a random half. If we have uh, two mice, we don't know which genes they'll share, though we know it'll be half of them, and half of the genes will be different. The advantage of the system is you can make as many of these mice as you want anywhere in the world at any time, and you'll get this year after year after year, you'll get the same population characteristics. No two mice are identical, but all populations of UMHET3 genetically are identical with one another. So it's a form of reproducible heterogeneity. And this way, if we, if we had by chance tested a drug that worked in black six and only tested in black six, we really wouldn't know whether it would work in any other stock. And if we had tested a drug that failed to work in black six, we would have fooled ourselves into thinking that it was a loser drug. There are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of genotypes um, available in the UM HET3 population. It's really unlikely that one weird genotype would either trick us into believing something to be true when it really isn't, or trick us by missing a, a good response. The other sort of um, ancillary benefit is you can map genes. There's a set of collaborators, including Rob Williams at Tennessee and Johan Auerx in Switzerland, uh, which have taken these mice. We've given them, uh, at this point, something like 12,000 tails, 12,000 DNA samples from mice that have a known lifespan. And they have already published a paper. It came out last year in Science, and there's another one in the pipeline now that says, oh, look, here's a gene that tells you how long the females will live. Here's a gene that tells you how long males and females will live. Here's a gene that tells you how long you'll live, but it only counts if you've made it past the midpoint. It only works on the oldest half of the mice. All that is very cool science. It, there are hints to human genetics lying within that, and it gives you new tools for thinking about and then working out ideas about the ways in which your inheritance modifies your aging and maybe even your response to drugs. Rich, I want to make sure that listeners who maybe <clears throat> aren't as familiar with genetics understand the significance of uh, the UMHET3 mouse relative to the black uh, six. So let's again talk about what it means when you have a black six model. They are all identical, correct? Absolutely correct, but it's even worse than that. Not only are they identical, they are homozygous. That means that the gene they got know, from their the mother from the is mom identical. And the gene from the father are the same. So it's like an inbred exactly. form of yes. homozygosity that we can't, we don't even have a human phenotype that is that inbred. 
Right. People avoid inbreeding because it turns out that when you inbreed people, you get very sick people, a lot of deaths, a lot of deformities, a lot of uh, mental uh, disabilities. And that's true of inbred mice as well. Inbred mice almost always have something terribly wrong with them. Nearly every kind of mouse that's used in aging research is fully deaf by one year of age. Many of them yeah. are blind. Many of them get a single disease, which is not representative of mice in general. Yeah, so it's, it's almost like a thought experiment where you take a small population of people and you make them breed and breed and breed and breed and breed yeah. until they all become one person. And, and then there's two yeah. issues. One is the probability that that person is healthy is zero. And then secondly, even if you accept that fact and yeah. do all of your testing, what is the likelihood yeah. that what you learn is relevant to people who are not inbred? Yeah, you can see it in the form of a clinical trial. Let's say you have a drug, you want to test it to see if it uh, prevents cancer in people or something, and you decide your test population will be a set of identical triplets, Jim, Josh, and John. They're identical triplets, and you've decided you're going to test it in them. People would laugh at you. <laughs> That's not a good design. If you want to see if your drug works, you sort of have to test it on people who are not identical genetically to one another. Yet that sort of thing, which is so obvious in you know, human analogies, is ignored by nearly all mouse scientists. I hate asking people to sort of speculate on the motivations of others, but why does the Black Six model still exist? Why is biomedical research being done in this model um, if, if, we have, if we want to have any interest in some translational insight? You're a scientist. You're setting up your own lab. Your mentor in her lab, she used Black Six. And so all your preliminary data is in black six. And so you do black six. If you are aware of these controversies, you just might say, oh, I want to test it in some other kinds of mice. But then you say, no, 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 my money is limited. I, I can only afford one kind of mouse. I'm going to take the kind I'm familiar with. It's like lemmings. You follow the lemming in front of you because that's just how lemmings do it. They don't look at a road map or think about the optimal path to take. They just follow the person who trained them, who's following the person who trained them, et cetera, et cetera. Inbred mice are good for two things. Um, they're almost always sick. And if you want to study some kind of sickness, bingo, you've got it. If you want to study lymphoma, you've got some inbred mice that get lymphoma or get blind or get hereditary deafness or something. Studying inbred mice is great for that. The other thing that they're critical for is for transplantation. There are a lot of experimental designs where you have to take cells from one kind of mouse, stick it into another kind of mouse. But for, for that to work, both mice have to have the same genotype. Inbreds are still bad for that. The right ones you want to do are the children of two different kinds of inbred mice. That's called an F1 mouse. They're better because they live longer, they're less sick. But that's what inbred mice are good for. You can use them to construct real mice, like they had three mice. They're good building blocks, like Lego blocks. <laughs> But to do science on them is almost always a mistake.